so hello friends in previous class we have started with uh, stepper motors um we have seen uh, there are three types of uh, stepper motors first is variable reluctance motor second is permanent magnet stepper motor and third one is the hybrid uh, stepper motor so in uh, previous class we have seen uh, the construction and working principle of uh, variable reluctance motor uh, i hope you have understood it so now let us see the construction and uh, principle of working of the permanent magnet stepper motor so in uh, permanent magnet stepper motor as its name indicate its rotor is of permanent magnet and stator is having multiple poles so this is the constructional diagram of four phase uh, four phase permanent magnet stepper motor so four phase they are having the four phases in um, stator winding so stator winding is usually a multipole multi phase winding so there are multiple poles and multiple phases are uh, there in the uh, stator winding and uh, usually these poles are the salient pole type of poles salient poles means uh, this is came out of this uh, particular structure so if this is a circular ring so this pole has came out of it so it is a salient pole this is also a salient pole this is another salient pole so this is salient pole type of uh, construction okay so uh, a four phase permanent magnet stepper motor is shown and for every pole there is one phase so for a pole a1 a2 this is the phase a phase b so b1 b2 this is the winding c1 c2 winding for c phase and d1 d2 winding for d phase so whenever current will flow through this particular winding a north pole will be developed uh, across this particular pole if current is flowing through this particular winding the north pole will be developed across this particular phase okay if current is flowing through phase um, c pole c then here north pole will be produced on phase c if current is flowing through this d then north pole will be produced on this d phase okay so this is the construction of uh, uh, the stator and the current flowing through this uh, windings it is again controlled in the same manner as that of the switching arrangement and these switches uh, usually they are of electronic uh, type switches that is uh, it may be a transistor it may be a mosfet igbt or so on okay so that whenever this switch is on electronic switch is on the current uh, will be supplied from this battery and positive of current will flow from this positive end of battery it will flow through this particular winding and back to negative if switch sw2 is closed then current will flow through b1 b2 winding through this by this path if switch sw3 is on then current will flow by this path and if sw4 is on then current will flow by this path so you can turn on the switches one by one and the current will flow through one by one coil that means the north pole will be produced on one by one of this poles or phases of the stator now usually this rotor rotor is also maybe of the salient type of construction or it may be a a uh, smooth cylindrical type of construction so generally in permanent magnet stepper motors cylindrical type of uh, structure rotor structure is preferred and uh, it is a permanent magnet uh, rotor so north and south poles are permanently developed on this particular rotor so n and s poles are constantly there and that's why the name permanent magnet stepper motor and the north pole on this stator poles or uh, stator phases will be developed just by switching on these switches um, sw1 sw2 sw3 or sw4 that means the current will pass through this a1 a2 winding or b1 b2 or c1 c2 or d1 d2 producing the north pole on either a winding 
और बी और सी और डी स्टेटर पोल्स ओके सो दिस इज द कंस्ट्रक्शन नाउ लेट अस सी द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑपरेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर मोटर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल स्टॉप दिस वीडियो एज इट इज कंज्यूमिंग मोर बैंडविड ओके सो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड इट शोज द ऑपरेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर परमानेंट मैग्नेट स्टेपर मोटर नाउ लेट अस से आई हैव मेड द सीक्वेंस ऑफ स्विचेस एज एस डब्ल्यू वन ऑन फर्स्ट then sw2 then sw3 and sw4 so that initially on uh, pole a there will be north uh, pole produced then on phase b uh, north pole will be produced then after that on c it will be produced and then later on on d it will be produced okay so as sw1 is closed now in this first figure you can observe on this a salient pole north pole is developed and as north pole is developed on this uh, a uh, salient pole the cylindrical type of rotor um, whose south pole is there that south pole will be attracted towards this north pole so wherever it is if it is at this particular position it will be uh, brought back and it will be aligned with this particular north pole so that this magnetic axis will be aligned or this south pole will be attracted towards this north pole right now immediately after first switch when sw1 is um, opened uh, then at that time i have turned on the sw2 so as sw2 is turned on instead of and uh, sw1 is open so as it is open a coil on a point uh, a pole there won't be any north pole existing now and as sw2 is closed there will be south pole developed on uh, sorry north pole developed on b phase right so that is shown in this particular second figure so here on at b north pole is produced now as north pole is produced in this particular uh, pole or phase this rotor whose s pole was at this position now it will be attracted towards b position and rotor will rotate in clockwise direction by 90 degree and this south pole of rotor will be aligned with the magnetic axis of this particular b pole as there is a north pole developed on this b pole right now later on um, when um, i have switched off again sw2 and switch on the sw3 so as soon as sw3 is on then current will flow in c c1 c2 that means a north pole will be produced on this c pole whereas the other switches sw1 2 and 4 they are open so as they are open there is no current flowing through a b and d winding so there won't be any pole developed across a b or d only at c there will be north pole developed and now this south pole of rotor will get attracted towards north pole of this c stator right and that's why again further this rotor will rotate by further 90 degree so initially this pole was uh, rotor was at this particular position so it will rotate by 90 degree again it will rotate by 90 degree so overall rotation of 180 degree will um, has taken place till now later on further whenever i will switch off this sw3 and switch on sw4 then again the north pole will be developed across this d uh, pole of this stator winding and further this uh, rotor south pole will be attracted towards this and this rotor will move again 90 degree in clockwise direction then later on again i'll switch off this sw4 and switch on this sw1 so if i'll make this switches in uh, turn on in the sequence 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 then 
my rotor of this particular motor will rotate in clockwise direction right similarly if i want to reverse the direction what i have to do i have to again change the sequence so instead of 1 2 3 4 i'll change the sequence as sw1 4 3 2 1 4 3 2 1 4 3 2 so if i'll make this sequence the north pole will be developed on a d c b a d c b so that this now rotor will rotate in anti clockwise direction because initially when uh, i have switched on sw1 it was at s uh, this position then immediately if i in after a if i Um, um turn on the switch sw2 then this b pole will be have a develop um, b pole will be uh, with north pole so north pole will be developed on this b phase so that rotor will rotate in this direction that is clockwise direction and instead of sw2 if after sw1 i uh, turn on sw4 then there will be Uh, north pole developed on d phase instead of b so this rotor will rotate in opposite direction so um, as i am changing the sequence of this uh, switches the direction of rotation is changing so i hope you have understood uh, this uh, permanent magnet stepper motor principle now let us compare uh these two uh, first uh, or uh, before that um, i want to tell you one more thing the stepper motors with permanent magnet rotors with large number of poles cannot be manufactured in small size hence small steps are not possible this is the biggest disadvantage of the permanent magnet stepper motor and this is overcome in variable reluctance type of stepper motor that is we have already seen that however nowadays a disc type of permanent magnet stepper motors are designed which have the low inertia and smaller step angles so these are the uh, major uh, drawbacks you can say drawback of this uh, particular uh, motor okay right so i hope you yeah, understood the working principle of uh, construction and uh, working principle of operation of permanent magnet stepper motors also now let us compare uh, these two variable reluctance stepper motor and permanent magnet stepper motor so the uh, first variable reluctance uh, uh, stepper motor uh, the rotor is not magnetized whereas in permanent magnet stepper motor its rotor is permanently magnetized okay then in permanent magnet uh, stepper motor uh, low torque to inertia ratio is there whereas in variable reluctance stepper motor high torque to inertia ratio is there okay then high rates of accelerations are there in variable reluctance motor whereas in permanent magnet stepper motor acceleration is slow then in permanent magnet stepper motor very its uh, dynamic response is very slow whereas the dynamic response of variable reluctance stepper motor is very fast okay then maximum step size uh, or maximum stepping rate will be uh, that can be as high as 1200 pulses per second in variable reluctance stepper motor whereas it cannot be available in permanent magnet stepper motor whereas the maximum stepping rate in uh, permanent magnet stepper motors can be around 300 pulses per second then permanent magnet stepper motors cannot be manufactured for large number of poles due to difficulties in construction whereas variable uh, reluctance stepper motors can be manufactured for large number of poles and as large number of poles are there very st small step angle is possible and here 
as it cannot be uh, manufactured for large number of poles the step angles are high in the range of 30 degree to 90 degree only okay and uh, in uh, case of permanent magnet motor its major advantage is the presence of a detent torque so detent torque is present in case of permanent magnet whereas in case of variable reluctance stepper motor detent torque is not present and in variable uh, reluctance motor the rotor has salient pole type of construction that is the poles are projected out whereas in case of permanent magnet motor the rotor is mostly smooth cylindrical type of construction so i hope uh, you understood uh, all these uh, um, points and you will be able to write the um, uh, comparison between variable reluctance and permanent magnet stepper motors if it is asked in the exam okay now the last type of uh, this uh, stepper motors it is the hybrid stepper motor so this is the diagram shown uh, of it uh, this is the stator and this is the rotor and to this uh, rotor shaft this is the shaft and to this rotor shaft this shaft is connected and its extended construction is like this okay so you need to draw this diagram and that's why since this uh, diagram is uh, difficult to draw in the exam it is not frequently asked uh, question in the exam but you should know um, how it operates okay and what is the construction of this uh, particular motor okay so the hybrid stepper motor uses the principle of the permanent magnet and variable reluctance stepper motors combined so that's why its name as hybrid so it combines both the principles of operation of permanent magnet motor a stepper motor as well as variable reluctance stepper motor okay in hybrid stepper motors the rotor flux is produced by the permanent magnet and is directed by the rotor teeth to the appropriate parts of the air gap the permanent magnet is placed in the middle of the rotor it is magnetized in the axial direction each pole of the magnet is surrounded with soft tooth laminations now the constructional diagram is uh, as shown here now the main flux path is from the north pole of the magnet into the end stack across the air gap through the stator pole axially along the stator through the stator pole across the air gap and back to the magnet south pole via the other end stack okay so uh, there are usually eight poles on the stator as shown here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 each. each pole has between 2 to 6 teeth there is two phase winding the coils on poles 1 3 5 and 7 are connected in series to form phase a while the coils on poles 2 4 6 and 8 are connected in series to form phase b 